We went deep sea fishing once in Florida, and I was having a good time until the guys started catching fish. As we pressed out into deep waters, the ship captain cast the poles out of the ship, and we started reeling in beautiful blue and green mahi-mahi, which was the whole reason for going. Everything was fun and new and exciting until they started throwing the mahi-mahi in the cooler right by me. And my heart wouldn't let me fish anymore. All I heard were those mahi flopping around in that cooler, begging for somebody to have mercy on their guiltful souls. They were flopping like fish out of water. And all I could hear was Nemo calling for his dad. And I could see his dad swimming halfway around the world just to try to find his lost son. It was traumatic. I wanted to commandeer that boat, open up that cooler, and throw the fish back in the ocean. But then I'd have to explain to all my friends why they spent hundreds of dollars to go deep-sea fishing so I could throw their fish back into the deep sea. I stayed put right on top of that cooler until I didn't hear any fish flopping anymore. I know, I know, I'm a monster. I'm way too much of a softy to go fishing. When I got back home, I decided, I've got to man up. I'm going to give this another try. I'm going to go fishing again. And Brother Weaver took me out on the boat on Lake Monroe to show me how to fish like the lake fishermen fish. He showed me how to bait a hook. Said, All right, LJ, first you get yourself a hook. Okay, then you get yourself a minnow. I'm with you. And you drive that hook right through that minnow's eye. Huh. I want to go home. I'm just not a fisherman. But Simon, now Simon was a fisherman. He looked like a fisherman, those tan leathery muscles. He smelled forever more like a fisherman. Mrs. Simon would tell you he smelled just like a fisherman. He lived like a fisherman. Every night as the sun disappeared, he kissed Mrs. Simon and met up with fellow fishermen as they all headed for the boats to see what gifts the ocean had to give. Simon had the I'd rather be fishing bumper sticker on his mule. Simon was a fisherman, and fishing brought these two together at the Lake of Gennesaret. Simon the fisherman, and Jesus the rabbi. And that day Simon met Jesus would change Simon's life and ours. Jesus was new in town, but everybody already heard what he had done in Cana and in Jerusalem. And as the crowd's curiosity grew, so did the crowds. Jesus knew he would need to teach from somewhere where everybody could hear. As he looked around for a pool pit, he noticed two empty boats. Fishermen were about to clock out. They were washing their nets. Jesus stepped onto one of the empty boats, the one that belonged to Simon. And Simon was flattered that the wonder worker wanted to use his boat. Hey, a uh, little help, Simon. Could you push out a little from the land so I can teach? Sure, boss. Jesus knew about acoustics. He engineered acoustics. Jesus knew if he stood on the boat a little from land, his voice would carry across the calm water. But Jesus was not setting up just a first century microphone. Jesus was testing Simon, and if Simon passed, he was about to have front row seats for a miracle. Hey, good day to you, Simplify listeners. You're listening to L.J. Harry, and you're listening to A True Fish Story on Simplify. crowd sat there with their jaws on the beach because of the power and the authority in Jesus' words. And then suddenly, Jesus turned to Simon and said, launch out into the deep, let down your nets. You're going to catch a lot of fish. And one of Simon's eyebrows raised. He looked at the rising sun and the calm waters. Then he glanced back at the shore and all of the clean nets. Fishing was done for the day. They would have to eat grape nuts for breakfast since they didn't have any fish. But Simon was impressed by Jesus' words, but he thought, why don't you just, why don't you leave fishing to the pros? And Simon answered Jesus, hey, listen, boss, I, I know you're a great man, quite a carpenter. You're a silver tongue speaker. You're a miracle worker, and I don't know nothing about those trades, but I do know fishing. And we fished all those waters all night long last night, and we didn't catch nothing. Simon thought back to the last long eight boring hours in the boat as he thought about getting a bumper sticker that reads, I'd rather be sleeping. That night was a colossal waste of his time. No fish in that lake interested in ending up in his frying pan. And every good fisherman knows you don't fish during the day. Fish feed at the surface of the water after the sun has gone down and their predators have bedded down 
When the sun rises early in the morning, the fish pack it in and head for deeper, safer waters. And Simon and his fellow fishers fished all night. If the fish were there, they would have found them. And if the fish were going to bite, they would have bitten. They were done for the day. They're not biting, and they're not swimming into the net. But maybe Simon was starstruck, or maybe just to humor Jesus. Simon said, but I'll tell you what, here's what I'll do. Here's what I'll do for you. I will let down a net because you say so, just to make you feel better. Jesus said, throw down your nets, plural. Simon said, <laughs> we'll throw in a net, singular, because Simon expected more of the same. Nothing has changed since Jesus showed up, except Jesus showed up. And Simon threw that net in the water. The smug smirk on his face turned into a whoa. Every fish in the sea was now in the net. He could not believe his sleep-deprived eyes. He grabbed to the net, but he couldn't budge it. His muscles flexed for all they were worth, and he still couldn't budge the net. He yelled for his buddies in the other boats to come and help him before the fish took him under and took his net with them. And they worked together and pulled in one net full of fish, so full they had to throw fish in both boats, and then both boats began to sink from, from all those fish in the same waters these fishermen had finished fishing. Here's how great and good God is. Simon had no faith. He didn't expect a minnow to come near his net. But Jesus worked a miracle for him, not because Simon was great, but because God is. And God is good. And God shared his goodness with Simon. Simon and his fellow fishers were finished fishing. They already washed their nets when Jesus walked by. They counted their losses. They were heading home for the day. And Jesus had to have smiled knowing they were finished, but he had just begun. This miracle teaches us Jesus has just begun to work when we are finished, when experts like Simon say, we've fished these waters before. We've already operated. We've already prescribed as many pills and treatments as we can think of. There's nothing more we can do. We are finished. Jesus just smiles. I'm just getting started. What miracles does God have in mind for us? Some say Jesus doesn't work miracles anymore, but shh, don't tell him. He doesn't know that. He's still healing the sick and opening blind eyes and unstopping deaf ears and removing tumors and straightening crooked limbs. We had a missionary to Poland who was testifying about miracle after miracle after miracle in their country, and many of the people in their country call themselves atheists. They, they are finished with faith. They don't have any faith in the God we put all our faith in. And even though they are not towering paragons of faith, God is working. The missionary told them in a service Jesus was able to heal anybody who needed healing. And an elderly lady in the back came up to the front. She was carrying her four-year-old granddaughter. And she looked at the missionary and choked back tears. And she asked them sincerely, can your Jesus heal my granddaughter? And the missionary answered, yes, he can. What's the problem? The grandmother showed him the little girl's crooked foot. She was born with it. She wore a special shoe she had to wear just to walk. And they prayed for her. And while they were praying, God began to straighten her foot. And by the time they were finished praying, Jesus had completely straightened her foot. To this day, she doesn't wear that special shoe anymore. She can walk, hop, skip, jump, just like any other kiddo. Near the end of 2017, my sweet Andrea was suffering from nearly debilitating sciatica. It was unbearable pain. She could scarcely walk at times. She went to the chiropractor several times all the way through 2018 just for some relief, and it felt like this sciatic pain would never go away, that she would live the rest of her life with it. But thankfully, after all those chiropractor appointments and visits, it did go away. But this year, that same sciatic pain was starting to flare up again, and she went to Ohio camp meeting just a few weeks ago to a service focused on God working miracles, and in that service, she felt that searing sciatic pain go away and has not had it since. God is still healing and working wonders in the lives of people who have already washed their nets. Just because you might be finished doesn't mean he is. Jesus simply told Simon to launch out into deep waters and throw out the nets. He didn't give him latitude and longitude. No, none of this, ah, a little, a little bright. No, now back, 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 no, nope, to the left, oh, a little too far. Okay, a little this way. All right, and stop, and nets. None of that. Simon had no idea. Where he was going, he had no idea where the fish were or where they were going. He just trusted Jesus. 
Jesus knew where the fish were, but more than that, the fish knew who Jesus was. They'd heard that familiar voice before. At least those fish's forefathers had heard that voice before. He was the one who said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that has life. And when he spoke, voila, the waters teemed with fish. He created those fish. They knew his voice and they obeyed because he was their God. While everybody else hugged and high-fived over their payload and paycheck, Simon put the pieces together. He said, okay, let me, let me just, what just happened here? We, we fished all night, nothing. Jesus spoke a word and every fish in the sea is now in our boat. Jesus did in seconds what we couldn't do in hours. How did he do that? Simon fell at Jesus' feet and prayed, Depart from me, I'm a sinful man, O oh Lord. Simon changed his patronizing tune. He grew from, All right, if you say so, we'll toss in a net just to make you happy. Two, I'm not worthy to have you on my boat. And this time he didn't just call Jesus boss. He called Jesus Lord. Now Jesus had his attention and said, Don't be afraid, Simon, because from this day forward, you will be a fisher of men. Jesus came to the lake to catch more than the crowd's attention. He came to catch Simon's heart because Jesus had a mission for Simon even Simon didn't know about. He would use Simon to preach the gospel and the salvation message of repentance, water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, and the infilling of the Holy Spirit to the world. That day Simon left his nets, left a successful fishing business and followed Jesus. And from that day to this, all our lives are richer for it. Let's make it our mission all our days to follow Jesus and lead everyone we can to follow Jesus. Simon gained everything by following Jesus. So do we. I want to pray that the Lord would help us to trust him and follow him all our days. Lord Jesus, I know you're able to do anything. You're the almighty God. You're the God over nature. You're the God of creation. You're the God over the, the waters. You're the God over the fish. You're the God over the seas. You're the God over cancer. You're the God over every illness, every disorder, every disease. You are almighty God. I pray today, Lord, Help us to have faith. Help us to trust you. Help us to believe you. When you say throw in the nets, help us to throw in the nets. Help us to do exactly what you say because your word has all authority and power. I pray today, Lord, for those who are finished with faith, those who are discouraged, and those even who despair of hope. I ask you to encourage them, Lord, to minister to them, to bless them, to be with them, to help them through whatever they're dealing with and going through. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, work of miracles in their lives. God, I pray, work wonders in our lives. Let us see the hand of Almighty God at work and know you are for us, you are with us. Jesus, we love you. We magnify you today. I pray this and thank you for it in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Help us to follow you and lead everyone we can to follow you as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thanks, Simplify listeners. Be sure to click subscribe and share. And share this episode with others who may need to hear it and be a blessing to them, as I hope it has been a blessing to you. Got a couple resources would love for you to pick up. Uh, two books I've written. One is called Simplify. It's the devotional that launched this podcast. And then the other is 10 Words, a practical look at the 10 commandments. You can pick both of those up at PentecostalPublishing.com or Amazon or our charming bookstore here in Mount Vernon, Ohio, called Paragraphs at the corner of South Main and East Ohio. Also, 10 Words is available on Audible, and possibly Simplify may be available on Audible sometime soon as well. Speaking of sometime soon, I'm working on another book. So if you've been praying, Lord, would you please help somebody to write a book on the Beatitudes? Well, keep on praying, because that's what I'm, I'm working on, a book on the Beatitudes from Matthew chapter 5. So hopefully that'll be a blessing, and hopefully I can get that written and published fairly soon. I want to give a shout out to all those episode download winners from July of 22 
And here in these United States, Pennsylvania, congratulations. You beat out my home state of Ohio for the most episode downloads in July. So congrats there. And then our neighbors to the north, New Brunswick, held their lead strong all the way through July. So congratulations to you and to all our friends in Deutschland. Germany you had the most downloads of countries outside of North America. So congratulations to you. Thank you, all of you, for listening to Simplify and sharing it with your friends. Next week, I'm going to share a devotion with you called The Untouchables. I'm looking forward to sharing that with you next week. And always look forward to walking closer with Jesus as we walk through Simplify. Simplify.